a lucky school to actually exist in this form. You get speakers from around the world. Really, it's, an, it's a delight to see this for the last over a decade that I've been coming here. But let me get to the point. I don't want to get into the long little debate. Let me get to the point of focusing on the solutions. How do we do this? The reality is the mindset of people is really set on the idea that women are not equal. The way we see it reflected in our system, not just here. I've traveled to many, many parts of the world. I see it reflected everywhere. Women do not seem to have the same stature as men. How do we change that? I think it needs to be changed on a war footing. If it needs to be changed on a war footing, only then can we think about solutions, can we think about changing where we are today. Uh, I want to focus on a few efforts by people who have actually started doing this. Um, I was working with an, I was doing a documentary on an organization which basically takes women drivers and you know uses them as taxi drivers in the city. Now that, it seems like a very small concept that you know women driving taxis, big deal. But it's a huge deal. What they were talking about is occupying space, occupying public space. I think one of the most essential parts of why we see the India we see or in other parts of the world where we have issues between men and women, women have stopped occupying public space. We need to bring them back. They need to be seen everywhere. Somebody talked about women can't get out after 8 p.m. in Lucknow. You need to see women after 8 p.m. in Lucknow or wherever in the world. It shouldn't be, you know, the prerogative of men to be able to get out late at night. Um, I studied in Pune, uh, one of my first degrees. I was pleasantly surprised. Women in Pune would get out while their men cleaned homes. And for me, who had spent many of my years in North India, it was a surprise. I think we, within our country, there are many Indias and we need to learn from each other's Indias. And we need to kind of understand that if in one part of the country, rapes are down, violence is less, why is it less? We can learn from each other. We don't need to go somewhere else to learn this. Now, coming back to policy, you know, long-term solutions, policy certainly needs to change. People talked about violence against women. Certainly, the police has a role to play. Is the police empowered? They are not empowered themselves. They come from backgrounds where they're not capable of even understanding the violence that's taking place against women. And so I think they need solid education to start with. We do not need to you know, have such a poli poor police force, so to say. Uh, they do not understand the concepts themselves. You walk into a police station, it looks like really like a, uh, a little Gunda Raj. If you walk into a UP police station, I walk into many all the time. Uh, last year, I was dealing with a, a, a police station in Moradabad where uh, they basically uh, took a boy and girl who was 28 years old and decided to charge the boy with rape and kidnapping while the guy had married the girl. And they had filed the letter saying we were married couple, but they f filed an FIR and that FIR has still not been quashed even today. Well, finally, we gave, I gave shelter to the couple. They are finally married. They are living happily, but the FIR is not quashed. They are 30 years old, saying that the girl is under 16 and she was kidnapped and raped. So is our, our whole idea or concept about how we need to you know, handle our police and how our police needs to handle, that needs to dramatically change. And that will only come when people realize that there is genuinely a lacuna. Until we keep saying, oh, police is fine and it's not that bad and we can do a little bit of change and tinker around here and there, it's not going to change. One of the other big challenges, I think, is, is trafficking. Trafficking of women, big issue underpaid domestic slaves and trafficking is a large issue and that's when they get push, pushed into things like prostitution because more profitable for organizations to run that way. I think we need to put an end to some of this slavery and it has to come from everybody. Uh, Rajiv, sorry I'm, we're all bashing Rajiv here, but he talked about the maids coming into the UN system with, in the crashes. I, I look at it and say, Maids, like, well, what's that concept of a maid, you know? There, we have to really, really think about how we manage, how we showcase, uh, you know, staff to our own children to sensitize them. So solution-oriented, we have to start small, but our first little few steps have to be on a war footing. We have to, you know, make real solutions, putting in those 1-800 numbers or whatever, what, those four-digit lines for, you know, for where women can complain and actually things may get resolved, like the Delhi police has put in this uh, 
anti-harassment phone line. I think these are important steps in seeing uh, what we will see in the future. So thank you very much. I appreciate uh, being invited here to speak here uh, amongst all of you. Have a lovely evening. Thank you, Rohit. Now I call upon uh, Shweta Bajaj, International Correspondent, CCTV.